Uh, Asa Johnson. Uh, just got I just got released, but it wasn't for like anything too serious. Um, slide on, and it was just kind of crazy how this whole process works. Um, I, I mean, everything, everybody there were pretty chill. It was just more of the situation that itself and protocol that they had to follow. I don't know. It's, it was just a whole lot going on. Right now, I'm honestly just want, wanted to just go home, just sit down. I have like a court date coming up now. First time for everything, right? But that, that's a. No, you, you said you were logged on. What, what does that mean? Um, family member, I guess you can say. It wasn't really a family member. She kind of said some things that weren't really true. Could probably put me in this position now. So now I'm just trying to figure out how to go about it. It's confusion everywhere. Now I'm looking for family now, trying to get me, uh, pick me up here. And that's about it. Anything you want to change about anything that happened here? Um, I wish there was a more better, I wish there was a better way to um, question people, not only just question people. Um, I feel like there would have to be some way to not, how can I put this? The system is, is, is crazy because even if you didn't do anything it under it, you did something and that's probable cause more than enough to get them to arrest you or put you in a jail cell, anything like that. Just wish there was like a better way for this whole process to take place without doing that, having records on your, uh, having anything on your records and you know, um, sorry, just kind of nervous. Um, and I guess feeling like they are more on your side and they seem like they're on your side but then you realize they're not I just wish they change the way that they handle situations if that makes sense what did you do specifically that you wish you would have changed it was I wish just would have walked away should have got my own car didn't have anything so that I've been so leading up to this point uh, if I just walked away you know everything would have would have been fine you know, but of course, I just, you know, had to get my stuff and leave and stuff like that. I just wish, you know, that I didn't even come here in the first place. I wish I didn't stay back at my mom's. That would have been better. It would have been fine. What was the name of the police officer? That uh, I'm not sure. Didn't really get no names. Prince William County or Manassas Police? Prince William. That's about it. Sorry. No. Mustafa Al Jazeera Part 2. If you haven't seen Part 1, you should probably go and do that before you watch this to better understand it. Now, those of you that have watched it, you're probably wondering why I have this on Prison Awareness Network. So let me go ahead and explain to you. Since Al Jazeera's arrest, they have beat him multiple times. They've got him locked in segregation for over a year. They're blocking him from seeing family, talking to family using the phone segregation is a proven method of torture and destruction of the brain better known as tpbi traumatic prison brain injury okay if you look it up and research it it reverts right back to ptsd it's just a word that says ptsd by penitentiary segregation that's all it really means the family needs help man they've set this man up They've held him in segregation for all this time. It's not right. They've lied on him. They falsified reports. And, you know, something needs to give. They have allowed a civil rights organization to come into the jail and visit him, where they took pictures of his bruises from his um, beatings that they've given him for no reason. I'm telling this man's story because the family needs help. And all the support they can get. I'm about to play another video that better describes what happened and you can decide for yourself what you think. But this is wrong for them to charge that man with any type of murder, uh, even manslaughter, because he did not mean to do this. Like I said in part one, men do not ride cars off into traffic to hurt their girlfriends when they're mad at them. They do other things and it's proven, man. It's a statistic. I'm getting it out there to the public. So you all take care 
and I hope you get something out of this. After the video plays, go ahead and please shoot me a follow. Um, I appreciate your support. I need your support as well. A newly released dash cam video shows the seconds before a car crashed into oncoming traffic and killed a woman and her young daughter. Now, the man who has been jailed for more than a year, accused of intentionally causing that crash, may soon bond out of jail. He faces two charges of second-degree murder. Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey was in court today when prosecutors presented evidence, including video from that dash cam. And we want to warn you, some of what you're about to see is disturbing. This is some of the dash cam video the prosecution played for the judge to try to convince him to keep Mustafa Al-Jazeera behind bars. It shows the moments before his car crashed into oncoming traffic, killing his girlfriend, Dorothy Fontaine, and her five-year-old daughter. There is no audio, but prosecutors say the couple's facial expressions indicated they were arguing, continuing a fight that began earlier in the day over a former boyfriend. Then, as the car reaches an intersection, it veers left into oncoming traffic. Prosecutors saying Al Jazeera did it intentionally. Another other camera angle showing the victim's face and fear as she braces for impact. Al Jazeera's expression changing little. Prosecutors telling the judge the video proves if Al Jazeera is released, he poses a danger to the public. But the defense attorney had a much different take on it, saying even if the couple was having a disagreement, that's not proof the crash was intentional or that Al Jazeera is dangerous. They have a, a piece of video from one instance where it appears my client was trying to pass a vehicle and then in a moment of panic made a bad decision, an incorrect decision, because he was flustered and panicked. That is not a reason to hold somebody in jail, finding that they're a general and unreasonable danger to the community. Prosecutors also played a police investigator's interview with Al Jazeera made two days after the crash. Here's part of what he said when asked about what the dash cam video shows. It just shows you turning into the left hand lane, no skin marks, no breaking, and then just driving into oncoming traffic. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out why. I don't know. Why would I do that? But the judge ruling prosecutors failed to prove Al Jazeera would be dangerous if released. He granted a $5,000 bond. The decision, a small victory for Al Jazeera's family, who spent two weeks keeping vigil outside the courthouse, complaining he's not been treated fairly. If my brother had uh, a, a drop of guilt, we would not be here for him. We, we believe my brother is innocent. We believe that this was a, a, a horrible accident. We believe that. And I believe the evidence is going to show the truth. But Al Jazeera won't be walking out of this jail today. That's because the judge put a stay or a hold on his order so prosecutors could explore the idea of an appeal. Everyone will be back in court again next Friday. In Prince William County, I'm Julie Carey. News Mustafa Al Jazeera, part one. On April 5th, 2023, in Prince William County, Virginia, the car that Mustafa Al Jazeera was driving veered off into the left lanes of traffic and caused an accident that killed his girlfriend and her child. Law enforcement are pushing this as it was an intentional homicide, not an accident, after an argument, as if Al Jazeera intended to kill his girlfriend and her child. Now, one officer on the case, one of the main officers on the case, has been caught red-handed falsifying a report. And he's been disciplined for it, from what I understand. However, everything they're pushing is based off of a dash cam video in Al Jazeera's car, which had no audio. So how can they say anything? They don't know what happened. But Al Jazeera said it was an accident. Therefore, his words should be taken for that. He's a citizen of America, man. Men that are mad at their girlfriends that want to kill them do not just drive a vehicle into a bunch of lanes of traffic. That's risking your own life. Men that do this do it in the heat of passion and use guns or physical force because they're mad and enraged. You don't just drive a vehicle on off the side of the road. No, man. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. The free Mustafa Al Jazeera movement needs all the attention it can get. So please support them. They're on live every night on TikTok.
all day long. Only on for tonight, there are new questions being raised in the case of a man charged with murder for a crash that killed his girlfriend and her five-year-old daughter last year. They come after Prince William's police chief ruled the investigating officer had violated department policy. Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey spoke to the driver's defense attorney about why he thinks the finding casts doubt on the case. Mustafa Al Jazeera has been behind bars for almost a year now, accused of intentionally driving his car into oncoming traffic, a crash that killed Dorothy Fontaine and her five-year-old daughter, Empress. Initially charged with manslaughter, the charges were later upgraded to second-degree murder. Al Jazeera's family insists the crash was an accident. The defendant's brothers filed an internal affairs complaint with the Prince William County Police, alleging the investigating officer, quote, falsified a portion of his police report to say that the couple was arguing before the crash. Al Jazeera's brother provided a taped version of a phone conversation that contradicted portions of the written police report. Last month, the Al Jazeera family received this brief letter from Prince William Police Chief Peter Newsham reading, the investigation revealed that Master Police Officer Drum violated department policy, therefore appropriate corrective action has been taken. Al Jazeera hired a new defense attorney, Blake Weiner, who tells me he specializes in police misconduct cases. The police report talks about my client saying, I know what happened. He didn't say that. The police report also says that they were arguing in the car. He didn't say that. These are not only these material facts and material misrepresentations, they're the foundation of the government's case. Weiner says without the incriminating statement, there's no proof Al Jazeera crashed the car intentionally. Police will not disclose specifically what led to the finding that the investigating officer violated department policy. In a statement, a spokesman writes, the community can be rest assured the very minor administrative errors that were uncovered and addressed will not have a negative impact on the double murder charges the accused is facing in the deaths of a mother and her five-year-old daughter. And the Commonwealth's attorney also telling me the policy violation will not impact the case, writing, the letter has no impact on our case or the charges we brought. We were aware of the mistake that the officer made in his report and had already provided that information to the defense. Court documents filed by pro evidence supporting the charges, including dash cam video from the vehicle. But there's no audio on the recording. They claim they don't have audio of the dash camera. But here they are telling the public they were arguing. So if they don't have audio, and my client didn't say they're arguing, despite the police report saying so, what's their basis?